Thousands of children and teenagers, they go missing every year. Most are eventually found. Yeah, but families still waiting always cling to the hope that one day they might get that call telling them that their loved one is alive. Well, Fox 13 investigative reporter Tina Jensen uncovered one such call. It was supposed to end a family's nightmare, but it really only made it worse. I was six months when she came up missing. It's just, she's still your mom, and it's just hard. For most of Deanna Hewell's childhood, this picture is how she knew her mother. It was in newspapers and on flyers and ads in taxis. 17-year-old Lucinda Hewell's disappeared from a Tampa tavern in 1984. I remember going to school and seeing um, the moms drop the kids off, all, you know, their kids off all the time, or my friends always having their mom there, and I never did. Deanna and her family always hoped they'd get the call that she was alive. Then, one day in 1992, they did. She asked me who this was, and I said, Deanna, and she said, oh, my goodness, my baby girl, and this is your mother. Newspapers across the South carried the story of the miraculous homecoming, reporting that Lucinda had run away and hitchhiked that night in 1984 because she couldn't handle the pressures of being a young wife and mother. So she took on the name Amanda and moved to Arkansas. Eight years later, she was ready to come home. From your 24-hour news source. WTVT interview Larry, that's Lucinda's husband, after he received the news. To be honest, I'm not thinking about why right now. You know, it's to me that's a secondary issue at this point. You're it really is. I'm just thinking that I'm glad you know, so. she's alive. Right. Exciting, emotional, scary. Um, eight years had passed, and you just have questions that go through your head. What were you doing? Why did you do it? Nearly six months passed when detectives discovered the woman living with the family as Lucinda was someone else someone actually named Amanda. If you're wondering how that could happen, take a look at these photos. That's my mom, that's my mom. That's Amanda, the imposter, and me when I was eight at a mother-daughter banquet. Besides the fact that they looked alike, she also seemed to know a lot about the family. Here's the other thing, the family wanted so desperately to believe it was true. We didn't question it because she said she was her. There were lots of people wanting to believe it, including myself. Retired Arkansas detective Waylon Stepp remembers the day he got involved. I had a gentleman come into the station and wanted to speak to a detective about a missing persons case. The man had just gotten married and he was suspicious of his new wife. Suspicious because she refused to let anyone take any pictures of her. She gave him no information about her family, did not want to talk to him at all about her past. The husband's mother started calling hotlines for missing children and received a picture of Lucinda, who looked just like Amanda. Step brought Amanda in for questioning. We had reason to suspect that she was this missing person out of Florida. I started questioning her about that. He told Amanda that Lucinda had a distinct mark on her leg and that if she didn't have it, she could leave. Here's where the story gets even stranger. We had a female officer that took her into a private office and uh, observed it. Step confronted her about the fact that she had a scar too. First it was, yeah, okay, that's me, you got me. And then it turned into the tears of trying to explain why she ran away. She was quite crafty, I believe, to be able to, to weave this story into a believable story that it even fooled the detective from Florida. Those who had doubts didn't want to raise the issue. They wanted to spare further hurt to those, like Lucinda's mother, who believed it was her. I looked at her and said, nope, y'all got the wrong child. You know, I, I said that to myself. I, didn't, I just kept my mouth shut. To me, it just didn't feel like it was Lucinda. There was no connection. Lucinda's childhood best friend was excited to go see her for the first time in eight years. But then she knew something was wrong. I wanted to tell Larry that I just don't feel it was her, but I didn't want to break anybody's heart. A few months later, another twist. Detectives got a call from a woman who saw Lucinda's homecoming story and claimed Amanda was her family member who had gone missing. When we started pushing forward with requesting a DNA test, that's when things started to come to, to into focus. That's when they said, um, 
the blood testing did not match your mom, so that wasn't your mom. And I just remember freaking out. <laughs> That woman's name was, in fact, Amanda. She told the detective she was sorry for the hurt that she caused, and then she left Florida. Only Larry said goodbye. He died five years ago. He never dated or remarried, and no one knows when he knew that Amanda wasn't his wife. Amanda didn't respond to our interview requests. We're not using her last name to protect her privacy. But the Hewells want her to know they believe she was searching for something, too, a place to belong. They don't hold what happened against her. She was a part of our family for a little while, and I mean, we accepted her, we loved her. For the family, it felt like losing Lucinda a second time. We had to start all over again. Not knowing if Lucinda was dead or alive. I mean, walking through the mall and seeing someone and you follow them because you think, wait a minute, that looks like, you know, it could be her. The Lucinda Hewell's case remains open. Until there's a break, a family still searches and waits, hoping someone who knows will tell them what happened. Either way, she's okay. You know, if she's living a good life with somebody else, that's great. If she's dead, she's with the Lord, that's great too. But the not knowing part. Reporter Tina Jensen spoke with that family today, and they have a pretty big update as well for you tonight. As a result of this story, the family heard from Amanda for the first time in 23 years, and she said that she wanted to answer any questions the family has, and they are now setting up time to talk, at least on the phone. So there's so much more to this story. To this day, many missing children's websites list the theory that Lucinda Hules was another victim of serial killer Bobby Joe Long. Well, today we reached out to Long about the Hewell's case, and you can find out what he told us, as well as what this case has in common with the movie Goodfellas. Yeah, head to our website, fox13news.com. Just click on Finding Lucinda Hewell's.